A, a tree diagram helps because otherwise I think you're likely to either just randomly start making lists or missing some of the possibilities, right? Like you might say, okay, all boys, um, let's do uh, three, well, let's start all girls, three females, two females, one male, one female, two males, or three males. And you might say, okay, there's four different things that can happen, so you got a 25% chance of each, right? That's a big assumption there, and you need to you need to look at it more significantly. All we know is, all we're assuming is that the chance on each birth, there's an equal chance, right? So it it probably helps to uh, to generate the list by looking at a tree diagram here. This is one way. This is not saying that. If someone asks you the how many children in a family question, you have to do a tree diagram. Please don't approach this unit by trying to memorize possible solutions. This is one way you can see the sample space for something. You can make a list here. The first birth could be female or male, right? So this is the first child. After that, the next child could be female or male. So this is the second child. Or if it goes down here, this could be female or male. And then the third child could be same thing here, right? Okay, now maybe your tree diagram looks a little better. Incidentally, you don't have to make the tree sideways here. You could make it uh, whichever way you want. <laughs> Upside down, right side up. If you look at how many ends of the branches there are here, that tells you how many outcomes. There's not really only, there's, these outcomes are not equally likely if you look at this. What does this branch here lead to? Three females, okay? This is my situation, I have three girls. What does this branch lead to? So I'm going to do this, right? Write it out that way instead of writing, instead of just writing um, two females, one male. If you write out the other... Uh, ones here in the order that they happen and look at it then you get all the outcomes. How many different outcomes are there? How many? There's eight different outcomes. Eight outcomes. Some of them it, the way we're categorizing it aren't different, and that's why you. That's why sometimes you think like like I have three girls, and people say, "Oh wow, oh wow. they kind of respond as in, "Yeah, what are the chances of that happening?" Though the chances of that happening are just the same as any of these other ones, right? So you know, if you happen to be, if you happen to uh, have be a female and have two brothers like this one, let's say the you're the youngest of three and you have two older brothers. People should react the same way. Oh, wow, what are the chances of that? Two boys and then a girl. It's the same thing, right? It's just people don't react to this because it doesn't seem as out of the ordinary, right? This this doesn't seem as out of the ordinary as as uh, as this does, but they have the same chance of happening. People should be saying that. Oh, what are the chances? A girl, then a boy, then a girl. What are the chances of that happening? All of these are equally likely. It's just when you count them up, it doesn't seem out of the ordinary because there's how many that are two boys and a, or two girls and a boy here? That one, that one, and there's one more here, right here. Well, yeah, I would say so, doesn't it? When you count up all the outcomes, how many outcomes are there? There's three births. How many outcomes are there in each in each one? Two, right? Two things can happen the first child. If you did fundamental counting principle, two things can happen the second child. Two things can happen the third child. There's eight different outcomes, right? There's eight ways it can happen. Those are the ways it can happen. There aren't only four. There's If we're just categorizing as at the end as the total number of children, there's only four different things. But there's eight, there's eight different ways it can happen, and three of those are... Two girls and a boy. Three of them are two boys and a girl. And then one of them is all boys, right? If you wanted to count up the probability of each of these, the chance of each of these is, if you know that there's eight different things, each of these is one out of eight. Okay, each individual thing here is one out of eight. 
So if you're asked, though, what are the chances for each of those cases up above? Let's just move this down here. What are the chances for each of these cases then? Uh, what's the first one? The first one is all girls. Oops, a little too quick on the pen there. Uh, that one, we have that one, that one, and this one, right? What are the chances for that first one? One out of eight. What are the chances for the blue there, for two girls and a boy? Three out of eight. And this one is three out of eight, and this one is one out of eight. If you look at the entire sample space, what should this all add up to? What does it have to add up to? Eight out of eight, or 100%, right? If you made these into percentages, this has to be 100%. Those are the only things that could happen, right? If, you, if you're looking at any kind of situation, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't seem like the outcomes you're talking about are equally likely, but you can analyze the situation and break it down into using outcomes that are equally likely to figure it out. Okay, these four outcomes are not equally likely, but these ones are. So even though you think you know two outcomes might not equal, be equally likely, if someone says, "What are the chances of having three girls?" That's not equally likely to not having three girls, but you can use the premise of equally likely outcomes to figure it out by looking at each birth and deciding. Right? Does that make any kind of sense to you? Hopefully, you don't have to make a tree diagram. You could easily calculate it. There's lots of different ways to calculate this. We're going to look at, at things later on where there's different ways to calculate this. Somebody might figure this out by making that tree diagram. Somebody else might say um, there are there's three different ways that that could be arranged, right? There's three different ways that you could have two uh, two females out of three, right? So they might th they might say of the three children, two's, choose two to be the females. There's three different ways. And then calculate the chance for one of the ways and say, well, a half times a half times a half is one eighth. That's something we're going to do later on. Please don't learn this as when someone asks you the births question, you have to make a tree diagram. There's lots of different ways to figure this out. Okay? This last question is here to, to give you a different way of uh, constructing a sample space. Again, all we're doing at this point is counting outcomes. We're not doing any shortcuts like this yet. We will do them, but we're not doing them yet. Oh, look, a little thought bubble here. This is a good idea, right? A table is uh, a table's a good way if you have two different things involved, like two spins. Okay, this, this spinner here is spun twice. The reason a table is good for things involving two choices is because on paper you can make a two-dimensional table really easily, right? You could put all the outcomes for the first spin over here. You could put all the outcomes for the second spin over here. If it was three spins, it's not so easy to make a table because you need a three-dimensional table. <laughs> you need something coming out of the page for the third spin. If it's only one choice, the table looks pretty silly, right? 0, 5, 10, 20. It's not much of a table. It has one column, right? It doesn't make much sense to make a table. It's a list then. When you have two choices, it's, it's helpful to make a table because you can say, on the first spin, I can get 0, 5, 10, or 20. And on the second one, I can get 0, 5, 10, or 20. And then I can write down all the possibilities in here, right? Not that you need these lines here. But uh, it helps you see how many outcomes there are, and it helps you keep yourself organized. How many outcomes are there? I made my lines a little bit too long there, but there are 16 outcomes, right? Because on the first spin, you can get four total outcomes. Four in the first spin, four in the second spin, 16. Here's the 16 different possibilities there. You can see them in the table, okay? It helps you avoid mistakes here. Common wrong answer is here. Oh, there's four, four things you can get first, four things you can get second. Thank you. Four things you can get first, four things you can get second. So that means there's eight altogether. You know you don't add them, right? If you're spinning first and spinning second. Can you fill that out and determine the probability of you win a total of $10? I am going to call that probability of 10. 
And then the second thing here is same number comes up on each spin. I'm going to call that probability of same number. When you use the notation here, a capital P with brackets and something inside, it means probability of that. It's not a function or anything like that. Okay, can you work those out? And then look at the second situation is where it says without replacement. It means you do not put you do, you don't uh, put it back in after. Choose the first one.